Hi everyone, this is Ming Yao from Ozen Engineering, and this is a continuation of my series on using simulation to design firearms. In this video, I'm going to be talking about ANSYS Motion, looking at kinematic modeling of the trigger mechanism. So I'm using, again, this uh, CAD model from GrabCAD. So this GrabCAD model is created by Tony, great model for Desert Eagle. And I'm using it as a convenient CAD model to demonstrate some capabilities. Uh, ANSYS has a, two different rigid body kinematic modeling tools. Our latest tool is called ANSYS Motion. This is special in the ability to efficiently model nonlinear contacts for rigid and flexible bodies. So I'm going to demonstrate how we set up a ANSYS Motion simulation for this trigger model. Okay, we have a number of parts here. Uh, it's a simplified trigger assembly, but I'm going, still going to suppress a few more parts that I don't necessarily think I need. Okay. So the first thing we notice is that every component is modeled as a rigid body. So there is a moment of inertia uh, coordinate system and all the stiffness behavior are set to rigid. We can easily switch one of these to from rigid to a flexible body if we want just by changing it. We can also specify any material we want so if a part of this is aluminum. The biggest part of a kinematic rigid body dynamic analysis are the connections. By default ANSYS defines contacts and in this case, uh, we, in, for kinematic models, we typically want to define most of the model as joints. So I can select connection group joints and have ANSYS automatically um, create these joints for me. But it's obviously important to check through the contact to make sure everything makes sense. From a contact perspective, the only contact I want is a contact between this this piece here and this piece. So let's go ahead and see which one that represents. So this first one is basically the only contact I want. I'm going to change. This is right now a frictional contact. And I'm going to suppress everything else. Uh, here I'm going to predefine all the contact locations. The red is the contact side, so I'm going to select contact to say, okay, these surfaces may come into contact at some point with these surfaces. And that looks pretty good. Maybe I'll select a few, few surfaces just in case. And here. So now ANSYS will try to identify when these surfaces come into contact. Now let's take a look at the joint. So the, this one is already a contact, so we'll ignore that one. This one is a revolute joint between these two bodies. That makes sense. It's going to rotate along the z-axis, and we can configure this to make sure it behaves as we expect. This one is also a revolute joint, but we don't really need two sets of revolute joints concentrically, so I'm going to turn this into a fixed joint. This one here, another revolute joint. Um, let's see if it makes sense. So, so here, this one is oriented in the wrong direction. So let's try to adjust this joint here. Well, what I really want is Kind of these two surfaces and these two surfaces. So it's like we have a, an axle, a bolt in the middle to adjust it. And revolute joints are defined using the coordinate system. So we can change the location of the coordinate system. 
and then it's going to rotate along the z-axis so I want the z-axis to be aligned with the global x-axis so that's how we adjust our joint so that it behaves in the right way and finally this is this is a joint here and I believe we want this to be um, this is, I think I ended up selecting this as a revolute join as well. We can define this as a contact, but instead what I did was I selected a revolute joint um, for two edges. So I think I want to have it revolve around this edge here so I can say So these two edges can revolve around one another and it's going to switch this to a revolute joint and adjust the direction so that the uh, z-axis is the global x-axis. There you go. So let's see what happens when we turn this. So that's kind of what, what we expect this particular part to do. So those are all, all the joints that connects the different parts together. Now we have to position this in space or fix this in space. So let's go ahead and put a revolute joint here. We can put a revolute joint here. And we want to attach, oh, we probably should fix this one. So maybe I do a fixed so this part doesn't move. And then I want to attach a spring between this surface and this one. Okay. We have to give it some uh, values for the stiffness and damping so I'm gonna I'm going to put in uh, some fictitious values. And in here we want to preload it with a free length. So we're going to say this is actually 60 millimeters long so it and it's been compressed to about 40 millimeters so it's trying to push push this hammer upwards. We also have uh, I think in my model here I put in a another spring here but this one is a ground to body spring and the ground location I think I, I selected these two surfaces and then I displaced it outward so right now my ground is is here I can move it out in the z-axis uh, for the negative value so maybe 260 or minus 270 something like that it's attached to the ground the nice thing about rigid body dynamics is you can have things that are overlapping because as rigid bodies they don't really know any better so some sort of uh, force and damping on, on that okay. so let's go ahead and generate a mesh for this you can see we create a, a fairly coarse mesh on just the surface elements here maybe I'll adjust the sizing here give a sizing of let's say one millimeter which seems a more reasonable mesh size okay now we can set up our simulation so the analysis settings 
Um, we're gonna do just a uh, hundredth of a second, I believe. Yeah. We're gonna do, and that's all we have to do for this. And now we want a joint load. So um, there are a variety of motion loads available. We're gonna put a joint uh, load property, and we're gonna find this joint here which is our ground to trigger. And there's a lot of loads available, but ground to trigger load, and this will be a rotational uh, a motion function. Rotation, you can write a, you can create an expression or a constant rotation, or rotational velocity, and I think I put constant rotational velocity of 50 radians per second. So th that's the only load I have. I've constrained it and obviously the benefit of motion studies is that it's it's all rigid body so it's fairly quick quickly quick and we can do deal with lots of different contacts and our simulations is able to um, solve in a you know many seconds or even minutes of uh, of action. Take a look at what happens. Oh, it looks like I should have fixed this uh, <laughs> outer side here. Let's uh, go ahead and do a uh, put a join in there and fix this joint. So it doesn't roll away like that. So this simulation with all the contacts took three seconds to run, which is obviously very fast. What's special about motion is we can also select a, a, a component and make it flexible. So if we're interested in how much contact this part goes through, instead of a rigid body, we can turn it into a flexible body. And now instead of meshing just that part, we mesh a full structure. Running the simulation will take a little bit longer, but now we have the flexible deformation and stress on that part. Okay, you can see the deformation in the flexible body now. We can also look at the stress and strain. Seeing where the high stress is, at what position results in a high stress. So when the contact is just right over here, we have high stress values. And we can also probe the joint loads. So we can look at uh, uh, ground to trigger. And we can look at the total moment. Look at the moment it takes to actuate this joint as we at different points of the contact. 
So that's a quick demonstration of ANSYS motion and how it can be used to model mechanisms, especially in, like those found in firearms, the ability to simulate uh, nonlinear contacts, frictional contacts, as well as uh, fully fl fr flexible bodies, as well working with rigid body kinematic problems. So hopefully you like this, this uh, demonstration. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at OZ Engineering. And uh, if you like this video, please subscribe and like the video. Thank you and have a good day.